Hi everyone, welcome to church. At home. At home. Wow, that was a lot less uh, dramatic than last we week. We love being at home. We love being at home. Yeah, I pray do. you've been doing the housework this week. I pray for those of you that love the idea of homeschooling your kids. I don't know how it's gone for you this week, but it's, it's amazing. been fun. In our house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, church is amazing. God's good. He's worthy of being praised. Amen. 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 Oh, it's terrible. Sorry. Have a great Sunday, everybody. It's going to be awesome. Welcome to Equippers Online. We are live right now. Not live, we've actually pre-recorded this, but we want to bless you today. And uh, I pray in your home that uh, you're, you're not driving one another crazy, but we want to fill your home with worship today. And you're going to hear a powerful word from God in a moment or two. But I love Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. It talks about how you know, we're to be filled with the fullness of God. And that's our prayer during this time, that God would fill you with His fullness and that would know His presence in an exceeding measure. In fact, it goes on, Paul says, that God would do exceedingly, abundantly, above yes. all that yeah. we could ask or think yeah. or imagine. I'm believing today that God doesn't just want to meet your expectation. He wants to exceed it. So, so we're not just watching church. In fact, I want to encourage you to have church today. Yeah. And our prayer is that God's presence would meet with you and that you'll get a word of encouragement that will lift you higher to take hold of everything that God has for you. Yeah. The team's going to lead us right now. So how about standing to your feet, wherever you are, in your bedroom, your living room, wherever you are, and let's engage in worship. So good. Two, one, two, three. Very, very, very thankful to yeah. be here with you guys today. This thing. Jesus, I'm thankful for all you have done. Jesus, I'm thankful for all you would do. Somebody sing. Jesus, I'm thankful for all you have done.
your name this morning. Thank you, Father. This afternoon. Thank this you, evening. Father. God, you are so good. No matter what time, no matter what place, you are always worthy. Jesus, you yeah. are always worthy. Nothing changes yeah. that. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are in the name that's above every other name. So Jesus, in this place right now, come on, wherever you Thank are you, this Jesus. morning, make a decision to lift up Jesus. He is worthy. He is so good. He's so good. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus.
pray wherever you are that the presence and the power of Jesus would be in the room with you. And I know as well we're facing very challenging times and we've got many people streaming in, not just from around New Zealand, but from around the world. But we want to pray that God will meet with you wherever you are. In fact, the Bible talks about that. He's our ever-present help in our time of trouble. And so maybe right now you're sick in your physical body or you know people are sick or maybe you've got financial challenges or just even at home, there's some challenges going on there. We love to stand with you in faith and believe that God can move mountains, He'd move mountains, that He would come and do what only He can do. So wherever you are, how about you just reach out in this moment and we're going to pray that you know who Jesus, because when you know Jesus, you know peace. When you know Jesus, you know His presence in your life. And He can come and bring answers to whatever situation and circumstances you're facing. So Jesus, right now, we just uphold every person Lord, watching this right now. And we pray, Lord, that You come and meet them in their point of need. Lord, we thank You, Lord, that You're more than able. Lord, to do what's needed to be done. Lord, and we pray where people are needing healing. Lord, right now, your healing power would minister into their lives. We pray, Lord, if people are needing breakthrough in finances, Lord, or just in in relational or emotional issues, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'd come. Lord, and you you meet them with your power today. Lord, you you turn around situations and circumstances. Lord, you come and bring hope and bring life. Oh, and we thank you, Lord, that your promises are are yes and amen, and we can hold on to them. Lord, even when our situations and circumstances are looking contrary, knowing, Lord, that you're going to come good on every word that you've spoken to us. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness that's towards us and your grace that's available. In Jesus' name we pray, and I hope you agree with me and say amen, 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 amen. amen. Well, you may want to give God a big clap of praise wherever you are. And uh, thank you, team, for leading us in worship today. Hey, we'd love to just connect with you in a moment. I'm going to introduce Pastor Steve Graham. He's going to come and bring a message. But before we do that, we'd just like to welcome anybody who's new to the Equippers environment. We'd love to connect with you. And if uh, these uh, streams are blessing you, please do let us know. We'd love to hear back from you, any testimonies. Love to hear stories of what God's doing in your life and how this ministry uh, may have been a blessing to you. So you can connect with us online on our website or our social media platforms. Or if you've got need out there and uh, you think we can be of assistance, we'd love to, to see how we can help in those different ways. But otherwise, we're going to go to the Word of God. So I pray you're ready for it, ready to receive the Word of God. We've got Pastor Steve Graham. He's, ama- he's an amazing teacher on staff here at Equipage Church. And so where you are, come on, let's welcome him as he comes to bring the Word of God. Thanks, Sam. Hey, it's a real privilege uh, to be here in these kind of interesting, challenging times. And I want to talk about something that I think is um, really important at this time. And it might sound kind of a bit simple to start with, but I want to talk about kindness. Um, I don't know if you heard when, the prime, when our Prime Minister announced the kind of new system of alerts, she finished her speech by saying this, be strong, but be kind, and we will be okay. And I thought that was really interesting because often in New Zealand we talk about being strong. You know, kia kaha, after the earthquakes in Christchurch, come on, be strong. After the shootings, be strong. And she said that, but then she said, be kind. And that's a call to something that may be a bit different. And actually, I had a look on the government website about um, dealing with the pandemic. And actually, it has a whole lot of guidelines under things like uh, stay home, wash hands. But do you know the first thing it has? is an icon around how to be kind. And I think that's quite surprising. Uh, And and at a time like this, it's like, man, we kind of have a sense kindness is important, but man, maybe at this time we just need to dial it up to a whole new level. Because, you know, psychologists and and other people have always said kindness is really important. 
A um, few years ago, I read uh, a, some psychologists, marriage therapists, uh, Jewish guys, the Gottmans. They, they've studied hundreds of couples. They reckon they can watch a five-minute video of a couple and predict with 94% accuracy whether they're going to div get divorced. Wow. And they basically look for a few key things. So the neg negative things they look for, they call them the four horsemen of the, of the apocalypse, is this. If they see criticism versus complaint. Complaint is about you didn't take the rubbish out. Criticism is an attack on you, like you're lazy. If they see that, they're like, that's not a good sign. If they see contempt, the rolling of the eyes and so on, that's not a good sign. If they see defensiveness, someone who's kind of, someone tries to have a conversation and like, well, you think, talk about me, what about you, what about when you did that? Or when they see stonewalling that someone just don't en won't engage, like those are all bad signs. But they say something really interesting, they say two traits have been scientifically proven to make your relationship last. They're these, kindness and generosity. Wow. So it's like, psychologists have always said, man, if we want to do life well, if we want to do relationships well, we've got to do kindness. And, and at times like this, it's like, man, maybe we need to dial up that kindness to a whole new level if we're going to do this well. And, um, and, you know, one of the things I love is, like, if the politicians are saying it, if the psychologists are saying it, sometimes it takes people who follow Jesus a bit to kind of go back to their Bibles and, like, Oh yeah, we always believe that. Yeah, yeah, that's there. Because do you know what? If you look in the Bible, kindness is actually really important. Yes. And so I just want to take a bit of time to convince you that kindness is actually really central to Christian life. It's really central to following Jesus. Yes. Um, and so many of you would know a chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the, chapter, the love chapter it's called. Uh, it has a section at the start, we talk about the priority of love. You know, it's where he says, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but don't have love, I'm nothing. And at the end, it has a section, we often talk about the permanence of love. You know, prophecy will disappear, tongues will disappear, but these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But right in the middle, which is often a key thing for Jewish writing, he talks about the practice of love. And he says some really interesting things. This is what he says, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. Love is patient and love is kind. Then he goes on to say a whole lot of things it's not. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not arrogant or rude. But I think it's really interesting that when he, he wants to talk about love, the two things he wants to say is this, love is patient and love is kind. Wow. And uh, I don't know about you, but when, when I think of love, I kind of think of, you know, um, extravagant acts of flowers and rings and on your knee proposals and really over the top thing. But Paul, when he's like, do you know what love looks like? Love looks like being patiently kind to people. Yeah. And it's like, I, I, there's some definitions that for me really unpack this. So it says, what's kindness? To be kind is this, having or showing a gentle nature and a desire to help others. Wanting and liking to do good things and to bring happiness to others. So you've got that to be kind is just gently wanting to do something nice that's going to make people happy. Right. And then when you put that to be patient is this, able to remain calm and not become annoyed when waiting for a long time or when dealing with problems or difficult people and done in a careful way of a long, over a long period of time. So put them together. What does love look like? Love is just this patient kindness, just steadily, consistently, gently doing nice things to make people happy. Right. And it's like, oh man, that's what we need at this time. I just need to dial everything down in terms of intensity and, and rash and gruff and grumpy. And I just need to take some deep breaths and just be patiently kind to people yeah. in my world. Um, and so again, you know, it's like, what is it? We often say, oh yeah, we're called to love our neighbors. Yeah, but what does that mean? Give my life, lay down my life. No, it just means be patiently kind with them. Yeah. Now, I love the story that I saw um, this week of a young woman from our church who just was at the supermarket, saw this lady standing in front of empty bread trays and, and just went up to her and kind of noticed she wasn't looking very good and just said, are you okay? And that's that gentle, and the lady was kind of said, I got $30 to spend, the last loaf of bread is $7. And, and this young woman in our church just said, oh, let me buy it for you. Yeah. And, and for me, that's like, yeah. that's what it means. Just a simple, gentle act yeah. of doing something nice for someone. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, for Paul, it's like, this is really important, patience and kindness. And it's not, it's not like he had a brainstorm, oh, what should I write about love? I know, 
patience and kindness. He has these together in his head. Um, Galatians 5.22, many of you would know about the fruit of the Spirit. You know, he says it's love, joy, peace, the big three. But then do you know what the next two words he says? Patience and kindness. Right. Like in his mind, these go together. This is about the, the right. Spirit of God, the effect of God on our life. Yeah. We become people who are patiently kind. We yeah. go out there calmly doing nice things for people. Yeah. And it's like, that's the effect of the Spirit on your life. Um, Where does he get this idea from? Well, there's a commentator who writes uh, on 1 Corinthians, and he makes this interesting statement. Really, um, it should, well, it challenges me. He says this, Thus Paul's description of love begins with, this is his quote, with this twofold description of God. So this is the weight of it. When he says love is patient and kind, oh, we believe God is love. Well, what is God like? Well, God is patient and God is kind. Do you know, I was was a um, pastor during the earthquakes in Christchurch, and one of the things I found is that in times of crisis, people's default understanding of God comes out. Just crazy stuff. Oh, God is doing this. God is angry with me. God is judging me. God is judging our city. God sent the locust. God sent the plague. And it's like, no, no, stop all that craziness. It's like, you need to understand who do you, what do you understand about God? And in a time of crisis, your default understanding will come to the core. Um, A a writer, A.W. Towser, says this, What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. And that's why I'm talking about kindness, because is your default this? When you think about God, when you think about the challenge of you coping in this time, when you think about your family and your workplace, is your default setting is, I don't understand all this, but the one thing I know, God is kind. And God is kind to me, and God is kind in my world. Um, A.W. Towser goes on to say this, For this reason, the gravest question before the church is always God himself. Big words, he says, And the most portentous fact about any person is not what they at a given time may say or do, but what deep in their heart they conceive God to be like. And I guess that's my challenge to you at this moment. What are you, in the depth of your heart, what do you see, what do you think God is like? Where do you think God is right now? And the reason why this is so significant is because then he says this, we tend by a secret law of the soul to move towards our mental image of God. Do you see, if you think that God is a God of wrath and judgment, you're going to be out there just just being nasty. If you're convinced that God is a kind, patient God, you're going to become more patiently kind in your world. And, and, and just to, this wasn't some random thought for Paul. He was, this was the foundation of what he believed about God. So Acts chapter 14, preaching for the first time to people who had no context of, of the Jewish faith. And he, and he talks about we're bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God. Verse 16, he says this, in the past he let all nations go their way. This, verse 17, yet he has not left himself without testimony. Where's his testimony? Where's the evidence of God in our world? Not in the bad things. He says this, he has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven, crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty and he fills your hearts with joy. Where's God in your world? Those moments of kindness that you've experienced. That one teacher that was nice, that one grandparent, that one coach that was nice, that person that bought you the loaf of bread, that was God present in your world. Because he, he works through kindness and he wins people by kindness. Yes. Paul in Romans goes on, Romans 2 verse 4, Do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance and patience? Yeah. Kindness and patience, Paul puts them together all the time because he, right. he understands that's what his God is like. Yeah. God is patiently kind with people. You know, and all of this comes together actually in the person of Jesus. Do you know what Paul could sum up? How do I explain Jesus? How do I explain Easter in kind of one word? Well, three words maybe. He'd say this, the kindness of God. It was a demonstration of God's kind, that God gently stepped into your world and did something nice for you to bring you joy. He said it in Ephesians 2 verse 7, because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, or 2 verse 4, verse 5 made us alive in Christ, And down in verse 7, the reason for this, in order that in the coming ages he may show to us the incomparable riches of his grace, listen to this, expressed in his kindness to us. What was was God doing when he sent Jesus? Showing his kindness. 
He actually says this in Titus 3. One time, uh, verse 3, one time too we were foolish, disobedient, deceived. We lived in malice and envy. Verse 4, have a listen to this. But when the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared. Like, do you get that the kindness of God has invaded our world? So if God is patient and kind, we need to be patient and kind. And so Paul unpacks this. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 4 to 6, talks about as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in endurance and troubles and beatings, imprisonment. Verse 6, in purity, understanding, and then the two words together, in patience and in kindness. Yeah. Yeah. If God is that, if we're going to represent him, we're going to be modeling patient and kindness. Yeah. Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another. Colossians 3.12, as God's chosen people, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness. Guys, this is our job, to walk in the kindness and patience of God in this kind of season. So right throughout the Bible, God is kind. Uh, it's like those memes, like, um, God is kind, be like God, be kind. <laughs> This is God. God is kind. Be like God. Be kind. A couple of sayings that sum it up. I love this one by a Jewish philosopher. When I was young, I used to admire intelligent people. As I grow older, I admire kind people. Come on, what do we need? We need kindness at this time. We need extra kindness. Another saying, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. I don't know what you're struggling with now, being at home or whatever, but it's like, man, I, I just need to experience the kindness of God and I need to dial up being kind. Right. Yeah. So I just want to, let me just spell out a, a number of implications, four implications. Number one, you need to know that God is kind. Mm -hmm. What God is like and where he is and how do I get on board with what he is doing right now, all those questions, I want you to know he is present in your world to touch you with kindness. Yeah. He knows it's hard. He just wants to gently step into your world and do nice things for you. Yeah. You know, and as I said, one of the great, one of the terrible things about crises and tragedies, they reveal our default setting about God. Yeah. And, and so we need to get this clear. No, this is not, this is not candy floss theology. This is the depth of Paul's understanding of the character of God. God is patient and kind. So the second implication, then I need to act in that same spirit. You know, there's a great passage in Luke 9 where the disciples experience opposition, so they want to call down fire. And some texts say, uh, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man came not to destroy people's lives, but to save them. Jesus is like, guys, guys, the spirit we live in is of patient kindness with people, not of wrath and judgment. Like, what are you guys? And, and this whole theme of, man, we want to we wanna bear the image of Jesus. You know, he picks us up. Blessed are the peacemakers. They'll be called the children of God. It's like you bear the family resemblance. Oh, those people who make peace, they look like God. Matthew 5.45, if you love your enemies, you'll be called the children of your Father in heaven. It's like, oh, you, you carry the family resemblance yeah. when you're loving, when you're peacemaking. And Luke 6, he absolutely actually spells this out. Love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great. You'll be children of the Most High. Why? Because He, God, is kind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if I want to carry the family resemblance, I've got to be kind. Yeah. Great. So I want to know that God's kind. I want to I live in that same spirit. And so just two more things. Thirdly, I want to say this. Be kind to yourself. Because God is being kind to you. Now, there's a great story in Elijah in 1 Kings 19 where he's kind of burnt out. He runs off. He comes to this place. He just prays that he might die. I've had enough, God. And it just says the angel touched him and said, get up and eat. There's a jar uh, by his head with bread and, and jar of water. He eats and drinks, lays down and sleep. The angel comes back. Get up and eat and drink. Uh, you're going to need this. It's like, God's like, hey, I know what you need right now, Elijah. You just need to eat, you need to sleep, you need to recover. Good. It's like God is kind to you. Yeah. Like give yourself a break because God is being kind to you. Yeah. Do what you need to do to feel safe and secure and restored. You know, another example, Nehemiah chapter 1, we often talk about he's a great leadership model. But when he first heard of the crisis, he just says this, verse 4, As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And then he got up and rebuilt the city. But if you're just going to have a little moment, like be kind to yourself <laughs> and then get up and take on the world. But like God, God wants to be kind to you. But I guess the, the, the real important thing, number four, is this. Be kind to other people. 
Like, more than ever at this time, be kind to people. People are stressed. They're uncertain. They're fearful. Be kind. In fact, be extra kind. Smile at people. Maybe talk quieter. Maybe slow down the conversations. Maybe take some time. Maybe show some concern and compassion. Maybe do something little that helps. De-escalate the anxiety. Yeah. Go the extra mile. What about living in the opposite, spe- opposite spirit of the fear and anxiety that's over our community? What about if a whole group of people walked into our worlds carrying a spirit of kindness that just shows the calm, reassuring, peaceful, loving, smiling presence of God. Um, I was uh, down to speak at a church last Sunday, and then, of course, the services were cancelled. A couple of, and, and, but they said, oh, we still want you to come and do the live stream. I was like, oh, really? So, but I went and, and did this thing, and I talked about this thing of kindness. And when I was driving there, I felt God say, say, challenge me and said, I want you to prophesy to their church, and I want you to say to them, you are going to experience increased favour in this season. And I just have this sense, um, man, and I feel it for us again right now, we have an incredible opportunity. Normally, you knock on someone's door, they're going to tell you to get lost. In this time, if you knock on someone's door to sign, are you okay? You're going to touch their hearts. These could be the greatest days for us if we could unleash a wave of the kindness of God. If we could choose to walk in a spirit of kindness... I believe we're going to see exponential growth. I be, believe we're going to see full and overflowing. Uh, but if we walk in a spirit of kindness. So as our Prime Minister said, be strong, but also be kind. Yes, Understand this, God is relating to you in kindness. Just make a decision, I'm going to walk in that same spirit. And I'm going to be kind to myself, and I'm going to try and be extra kind to the people in my world. And I reckon we could, we could unleash a move of God like we've never seen before. Because God is a God of patient kindness. Hey, uh, I, I don't know how this applies to you and your world, being kind to those people you're in the house with, whatever. But maybe, maybe you've never experienced God's kindness for you. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're experiencing anxiety. I just want to say God is here for you to meet you out of his kindness. And we'd love to connect with you about that. Um, You can contact our website, contact the church. We'd love to respond to you and to let you know how you can connect with the kindness of God. Come on, this is a significant time for us to move forward as a church through walking in a spirit of kindness. God bless you. Let God be kind to you right in this moment. I know you're feeling his presence. And as Steve, as Pastor Steve is preaching, you could feel the kindness of God. Surely the goodness and the mercy of God is all around us. Mm. As we enter back into just a moment of worship. Just a moment of worship. Just let his kindness surround you. Here in your presence. Here in your arms, there's nothing bad, knowing your love. Help me to trust you more every day. You hold my forehead, you are with me. Here in your presence.
if you're being blessed by this word, maybe you're out there and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Saviour. You simply can know Jesus by believing in your heart that He is Lord and confessing with your mouth. I'm going to pray a simple prayer. And if you repeat these words after me, I believe Jesus is going to come and enter into your heart and life. The greatest thing in life is, is knowing God, knowing God's peace, knowing God's forgiveness, knowing the assurance of eternity. And the fact of the matter is we can't reach our potential without God. You and I are designed for a relationship with God. So right here, right now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He can meet you right where you are, in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you find yourself. I believe the presence of God can touch your life. We're going to say a simple prayer. How about you pray these words with me right now? Jesus, I come to you today. I open the door of my heart and I ask you to come in and be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sin and give me the assurance of eternity. Today I make a decision to come into relationship with you, to know you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you made that decision, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to connect with you. You can text 3406 and equip is your name and somebody will be in touch. But please do let us know because we'd love to walk alongside you if you allow us just in, in getting to know God more. In fact, what we believe church is is simply a whole lot of friends challenging one another to go higher in God. And we know God right now is living on the inside of you and your life can take on a whole new meaning and a whole new pu- purpose as a result of that. Hey, stay tuned with what, what, what's happening around Equippers. Maybe right now you want to become part of a, a group. We have many Zoom groups meeting around. I know people can't physically get together, but there's many ways that you can connect online. We'd love to put you in touch with those. But also just keep it online and uh, keep, keep a lookout for what's going on around Equippers Church. Hey, God bless you. Have an amazing week ahead. We're going to finish with one praise song before we go. The team's going to lead us. So stay tuned and uh, let's enter into this.
again so good to be with you we're looking forward to being with you next week stay connected stay communicating and just remember that you're covered yes. love you guys now i just want to encourage you today remember to love the people that are next to you the people that are around you the people yep. that are in front of you your neighbors we've got an amazing opportunity to reach out to our community and we time. need to socially connect so Absolutely. even though we're distant make sure that you contact your friends and loved ones through social media buy shares and zoom yeah, whatever that is. Have a great Sunday, church. We'll see you soon. Thank you for joining us for Equippers at Home. To see how to give help and get help, head to equipperschurch.com forward slash at home. You'll also find more information on getting connected, prayer and giving in this season. God bless you. We'll see you next week.